everybody, welcome back to my channel Culture Lab. Great that you made it back here. Today we're going to dive deep into culture and get to know seven amazing cultural traditions from around the world that are sure to make you smile. So let's get right into it. First, we're gonna travel to Iceland where on Christmas Eve people give books to their family and friends as a present. So instead of gift cards or spending tons of money on the latest technology, people give and receive books and spend the evening reading together. Isn't that a great way of making Christmas more social and more decelerated? I give this a big thumbs up. So the second on our list is Russia, where on the 8th of May, which is the end of World War II and Remembrance Day in Russia, people head to the cemeteries to spend the day with their loved ones. More than that, they have picnics or even barbecues at the graves of their deceased family members and celebrate life on the graveyard in memory of, of their late family members. Isn't that a great way to bring cheerfulness and life to the graveyard and spend a day socializing together? They bring even loads of benches, decorations, chairs and tables. I find this a, a really impressive way of uh, remembering instead of only grieving, celebrate life and to cherish the good memories. Next, we're going to travel way east to the kingdom of Bhutan. And the special thing about Bhutan is that it measures its national growth in terms of gross domestic happiness in contrast to gross domestic product. So one of, of the pillars of this gross domestic happiness are, for example, sustainable development, good governance, environmental protection and cultural preservation. So for example, it is mandatory in Bhutan to have at least 60% of the uh, country covered in wood. And also Bhutan places a huge emphasis on high value but low impact tourism, which means that a visa for Bhutan costs $250 a day, which however includes transport, accommodation and guide fees. And also, the later Bhutanese receive one full year of training in hospitality to make the experience for the tourists as culturally unique and authentic as possible. One local Bhutanese is supposed to have told one reporter, In your most beautiful places, you build five-star resorts and only the rich go there. In our most beautiful places, we build monasteries and temples and everybody goes there. Isn't simple lying not an amazing eye-opener on how happiness should be shared and cherished and attainable for all? I think Bhutan is definitely a huge idol in, in this context. Yond, its capital, Timpe. Timpe? I'm absolutely not sure on how to pronounce that. Please tell me if you do. is one of the two capital cities in the world that does not even have a single traffic light. The Bhutanese once tried it out but found it too impersonal so they got rid of it again. And it still works out pretty well because they're all happy to give way to each other, to look out for each other and also don't mind waiting. So this selfless approach is truly something that would make our planet so much nicer for all and so much more social if we just applied this in different areas of our life. Our number four is also in Asia, where at the festival of Kukutiha in Nepal, other species are worshipped in order to thank them for their service. So in this Hindu festival in autumn, people place floral or flower garlands around the neck of all kinds of animals. For example, a day for the oxen and a day for man's best friend, the dog. Because dogs hold a very special place in Hindu scriptures, and also are supposed to warn people of impending dangers or even death. So these flower garlands are put on every kind of dog, from pet dog to stray dog, all throughout. And of course, they are also spoiled with a lot of good food and special treats on that day. 
Our number five is in Israel where at Yom Kippur, the Jewish New Year, um, people visit their friends, acquaintances and family members in order to apologize for their mistakes of the past year and in order to yeah, forgive and restore their relationships and to start into the new year with unburdened relationships. So everybody frankly addresses their mistakes and asks for forgiveness but and also forgives in return. So this great level of reflection we could also incorporate into our daily lives to improve our relationships be it with parents, the partner or friends. Our number six is in Germany. It is called Polterabend. This is an evening where the upcoming marriage of a young couple is celebrated with friends and family and family and friends break a lot of old porcelain or dishes they just smash it on the ground they break their loads and loads of shards for the couple or the future husband and wife to clean away in order to strengthen their teamwork and cooperation abilities and to make the marriage last for a lifetime because yeah also in a marriage you have to work together a lot to make it work. And our last one is Japan number seven where they have the tradition of Wabi Sabi. That means that broken objects, for example plates and bowls are often repaired with gold. So these golden lines of the break make the object a unique piece of history, even adding to its beauty. So flaws and imperfections are seen as unique traits of beauty, which is a very big contrast to our standardized beauty here, where imperfections are supposed to be covered up, erased, undone, or God knows what. So let's take a moment to cherish the spirit that has no place for superficiality. It teaches us not to fall for constant self-optimization and to be more accepting of our own unique history and beauty. Isn't this an amazingly wholesome approach? So with this spirit, I'm going to wrap up this video. Now it's your turn. Let us all know what amazing cultural traditions you have in your country. Write them in the comments below and share your wisdom and perspective. I'm looking forward to it. So if you like this video, make sure to give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and also hit the little notification bell to always be up to date. And also find me on Instagram as culturelab2020 and also as always somewhere Tasha's travels to get my latest travel impressions and I hope to see you again in one of my next videos stay safe guys and bye